item number 1A, approval of the minutes of uh, November the 1st, 2010. May I have a motion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstention. Okay, policy calendar right, number 1B1, application to establish the new community college. Is that the vice chancellor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We begin CAPRA this evening with a very rare momentous and in fact historic event, an application to establish a new CUNY College, an initiative that has taken several years of intensive work by a huge team of people. So I hope you will permit me a somewhat longer program description than usual. The last time there was an entirely new college at CUNY was 40 years ago with the establishment of LaGuardia Community College. It's likely that there will not be another new college at CUNY until long after our generation has passed. The proposal before you today is the culmination of an intensive system-wide effort launched in early 2008 when our visionary and brave Chancellor Goldstein asked <laughs> our laser-focused and indefatigable senior university dean, John Mogulescu, to spearhead the development of an innovative new community college in Manhattan. At previous CAPRA meetings, you have heard periodic updates on this process. We are now pleased to present the entire proposal for the establishment of the college and its first degree programs for board approval. There is an indisputable local and national need to provide community college education to more students. At CUNY, the existing community colleges already operate at top capacity. The rising enrollment at CUNY's six existing community colleges has now surged past 85,000, a 40% increase over the last decade. Beyond simply providing additional seats to accommodate its significant demand, however, the new community college is intended to provide an innovative model to improve graduation rates. The planning process took into account best practices throughout the CUNY system, including CUNY's three-year-old Accelerated Study in Associate Programs, otherwise known as ASAP, which was funded by the Mayor's Center for Economic Opportunity. ASAP has produced an impressive 56% three-year graduation rate among its 2007 cohort of community college students, several times above the national average. After Dean Mogulescu's spectacular team prepared and widely disseminated a concept paper outlining a model for the new community college, Chancellor Goldstein approved a full-scale planning effort. The subsequent planning phase involved the CUNY community and outside experts who provided guidance on every aspect of the college, from its academic programs to its plans for maintaining student progress and engagement. External reviewers, joined by a representative from the New York State Education Department, conducted a site visit on November 1st and 2nd, 2010, and issued a very favorable report. That report is included in the proposal. Planning for the new community college has been supported by grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. The college's first home is the former Catherine Gibbs School, near the main building of the New York Public Library, a central Manhattan location easily reachable by public transportation. It is expected that the college will eventually be located in a new campus building on space presently occupied by John Jay College of Criminal Justice on Manhattan's west side. We are extremely fortunate to have found the wise, sensitive, and dedicated Dr. Scott Evanbeck to serve as the founding president of the new community college. He officially assumed his responsibilities on January 3rd. President Evanbeck is nationally known as an expert in post-secondary education, especially education of the sorts of students who will be enrolling at the new community college. He has already immersed himself in the work of establishing this new college and has immediately become a cherished member of our CUNY family. It is with great pleasure and pride
that I present for your consideration and vote this application to establish the new community college. This is indeed a historic day, and, and congratulations to the Chancellor and the entire university. <coughs> this is uh, not only is a, is a important milestone for this university, but uh, in my hand, it's the first time we get a flash drive <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, new college. Is in you know there will be a test afterwards, Trustee Shorten. <laughs> eight programs. Eight programs. Yes, mm -hmm. together with the eight programs. So it is exciting and, and historic. Shall we move this item, sir? Okay. May I have a motion to move this item? Don't move. So moved. Okay. Second. Second it. Okay. Chairman Casper. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. Oh, you want Sandy? The university faculty senate is very pleased to welcome the new faculty at the new community college, and hopes very strongly and powerfully that the new faculty is concerned, as we are, with the problems of transfer of students to the senior colleges. I understand they have been working on altering some of the, uh, or creating arrangements with the senior colleges for transfer. And our particular fear, as we wrote up in our report to the visitors, is we are really particularly worried about the transferability of the AA degree, which I think uh, may cause some difficulties. It is my hope that people pay attention to these issues particularly since the Board of Trustees is clearly interested in a smooth transfer policy, and that the requirements for a good education are respected. I understand the need for improving graduation rates. It would help these students a lot if they had the kind of money that the ASAP students had to graduate more quickly. But once again, I hope that we can continue working with the new faculty on making sure that no roadblocks impede the smooth transfer. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd just like to go on record. I, I plan to vote for this, and I just think it's a great example of the kind of initiative and leadership that this university is giving both to the city, and in fact, this is something that is a model for the nation at a time when people are retrenching in education, we're moving forthrightly to establish a new school to meet the demands for education in this country, and I'd like to commend everybody involved. Excellent point. Point well taken. It is indeed a role model for, for the rest of the nation. Okay, uh, Trustee Sutton just joined us. We're voting on item number one, the exciting news of the establishment of a new community college. Okay, let me re -vote it again. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions. We can carry it. Item number 1B2, it's application to register the first eight degree program in the um, new community college. Speak louder. Okay, along with the application to establish a new college, a proposal to establish its eight, eight first degree programs is being submitted to the board. These programs have been developed by faculty and academic administrators from across the system, including ongoing feedback from members of the University Faculty Senate, which we very much appreciate. In August 2009, over 300 faculty and staff responded to a university-wide invitation to participate in the development of the new college. Committees were then established to design models for the ideas presented in the concept paper, and later on to develop the preliminary plans for each major. These committees were comprised mainly of CUNY faculty who were drawn from both community and senior colleges. Throughout the learning process, the planning process, working groups convened to address the needs of English language learners and to develop the new college's innovative first year curriculum and its liberal arts and sciences courses. The college's initial faculty members are now in place and are continuing the college's curricular development including evaluation and further adjustment of existing majors as necessary and the creation of new programs. It is expected that once the college reaches full capacity, it will offer up to 12 majors. Reflecting the college's experimental role, it will grow to only uh, 3,000 students. The size of the new college necessarily restricts the number of majors that are feasible. The initial eight programs represent a wide range of disciplines selected on the basis of occupational need in the New York area and student demand with demand judged in part on the basis of surveys of college and high school students in the New York City area. The selected majors are a combination of applied programs that allow for immediate successful entry into the workplace 
as well as programs that provide pathways to a baccalaureate degree. Students who have developed an interest in a particular field and wish to pursue further study will have access to the vast array of academic programs offered by CUNY. New York State Education uh, Department approval of any new AA and AS degree, degrees that are considered pathways to baccalaureate degrees, requires that there be at least one articulation agreement for each such degree, making for seamless transfer from an associate degree program to a baccalaureate degree program. Each of the AA and AS degrees before you now for approval already has one articulation agreement signed with a senior college at CUNY, and additional agreements are being developed. Students in all majors will take the same intensive first-year curriculum, allowing all students to earn some college credits, even though some students will be taking remedial courses. Students will be expected to attend full-time during the first year of study. Research data show that full-time study has significant impact on improving retention and graduation rates. The semester model will follow, will follow that in use at Kingsborough and LaGuardia Community Colleges, with 12-week terms in the fall and spring, each followed by a six-week term. A particular emphasis has been placed on advisement and support services for the students in the new community college. Um, the eight programs are the Associate in Arts in Business Administration, which has an articulation agreement with Brooklyn's Bachelor of Business Administration. The second one is Associate in Applied Science and Energy Services Management. This does not require an articulation agreement because it's an AAS degree. The Associate in Science and Environmental Science, which has an articulation agreement with Lehman's Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science. The Associate in Applied Science in Health Information T Technology, again, does not require an articulation as it is an AAS degree. The Associate in Arts and Human Services, which has an articulation agreement with Lehman's Bachelor of Social Work. The Associate in Applied Science in Information Technology, um, this program does not require an articulation agreement because it's an AAS. Nevertheless, we have signed one with New York City College of Technology's Bachelor of Technology in Computer Systems. Um, I also need to note that this particular program requires 70 credits and therefore requires a waiver of the 60 credit board policy for associate degrees due to the need to comply with accreditation standards. Comparable programs in New York State routinely exceed 60, 60 credits. The next one is the Associate in Arts and Liberal Arts and Sciences, um, with which we have an articulation agreement with the uh, School Professional Studies Online Bachelor's Degree. Several other articulation agreements are being negotiated and are expected to be finalized this spring. And the last one is the Associate in Arts in Urban Studies, which has an articulation agreement with Hunter's VA in Urban Studies. Discussion? Second it? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Nays? Abstention? That's been carried. Item number 1B3, Kingsborough Community College, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, do joint AD, AS and BS in science for forensic and forensic science. <laughs> okay, thank you. This dual joint degree program is part of John Jay's ongoing initiative known as the Justice Academy which provides seamless transfer pathways for community college students into some of the most popular John Jay majors. Several programs involving John Jay and other community college partners have already been approved by the board and the New York State Education Department, and they show very healthy enrollment. <coughs> Discussion? If not, I'd like to entertain a motion. So okay. moved. Okay. Second. Second. Second by Vice Chair. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, that's been carried. Item number 1B4, Necker Airport College. This action effectively restores a single nursing department that had been split into two separate departments in 2005. The college's experience has shown that such separation is not beneficial to the programs, and it also requires uh, because it's in two departments, two separate accreditation processes in nursing. In order to better need, meet the needs of all nursing students, the college proposes to create a new department of nursing, ten faculty members from the Department of Associate Degree Nursing, and four faculty members from the Department of Bachelor of Science Nursing 
will be transferred to the newly created department. This action has been approved by the appropriate college body and will not affect the tenure of any faculty member, nor will it affect the degree programs or, or courses offered by the college. I do need to note that in the explanation of the um, motion, of, I mean of the uh, resolution, uh, there is a, a date error um, in the explanation where it says that the date of transfer will be February 1. It should actually be March 1. And we can apparently, as I understand it, correct that in the Chancellor's University Report addendum. Okay. Any discussion? May I have a motion to move this item? So moved. Moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Please say aye. 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 Nay. Abstention? Motion carries. Item number 1B5, Hunter College Doctor of Nursing Practice. The Doctor of Nursing Practice degree is a professional doctorate, um, and I should say it's known as a DNP. I'll say that instead of Doctor of Nursing Practice because it's shorter. Um, that responds to the national trend requiring all advanced practice nurses to have doctoral level education with an emphasis on clinical practice instead of creation of basic knowledge through research which is most typically emphasized in Ph.D. programs. This clinical doctoral program is distinct from a nursing research doctorate, such as the Doctor of Nursing Science, which is a degree that is currently registered to the Graduate Center jointly with Hunter, Lehman, and the College of Staten Island. The curriculum of the DNP has been created in accord with the required competencies established by the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. In fact, the AACN's goal is to transition all master's level educational programs for advanced practice nurses into the DNP by 2015. NYU and PACE already have such programs in place. In the past 10 years, there has been a wave of new professional doctorates, such as the PharmD, the DPT, and the AUDD, due to many accrediting bodies, particularly in the health professions, having started to require such a doctorate as either a first professional degree or as the credential necessary for advanced practice. Many university systems face the question of housing these degrees with traditional research doctorates or of allowing them to reside in relevant professional schools. About a year ago, CUNY decided to determine a program's placement on a case-by-case -case basis, taking into consideration a program-specific circumstances. Given Hunter's long-standing history of providing advanced nursing education and significant expertise in nursing, the placement of this program at Hunter is a logical choice wholly corresponding <coughs> to Hunter's mission. Indeed, Hunter has 29 full-time nursing faculty and has just hired its first named chair, the Hearst Chair of Nursing Practice, to support this program. Hunter is also the lead institution for CUNY's new School of Public <coughs> Health. In addition, this program helps to address the widely anticipated shortage in primary health care providers generated by the 2010 National Health Care Reform Legislation. It's customary for all doctoral programs at CUNY to be approved by the board in two stages, first as a letter of intent and then as a full proposal. The letter of intent for this program was approved by this committee and then by the full board at their June 2010 meetings. The full proposal, prepared in consultation with outside reviewers, as well as the system-wide ad hoc advisory committee on new professional doctoral programs, is now being presented for board approval. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Vice uh, Chair Maraj. Yes, uh, from a clinical point of view, uh, this new uh, PhD program. It, excuse me, it's not a PhD. It's, it's the not. DNP. Okay, but well this pro you talk about giving services to the community. <clears throat> My question is how much emphasis are those services related to psychiatry? Psychiatry. Well, what I, uh, sorry, uh, could yeah. you yeah. identify? Yeah. Jennifer Rapp, President of Hunter College. One of our tracks has, con has traditionally been nurse practitioner um, in mental health, and this will, we believe that many of the people who are taking that track will uh, take the DNP instead because the, as you know, the providers are now actually asking for a higher level of training. Um, so you. we are going like to, to answer your question, we have traditionally uh, invested in the nurse practitioners in areas of psychiatry and mental health, <laughs> and we are going to continue to do so because the need is certainly there. This is very important because the new trend is that psychiatrists are disappearing. We're getting old, people <laughs> are retiring, <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> But 
that generally speaking they are, and uh, the, the consensus is that eventually most of the services, the therapy services and the guidance, uh, counseling, all that will be given by, by nurse, by, by nurse, by psychiatric nurse. And I, and I just want to take that opportunity to thank all of you and to thank Vice Chancellor Logue for support for this program for exactly that reason, because it's very clear with the new Health Care Act that we're not going to have enough physicians to provide all the clinical services, and for nurses to be able to move into these positions is clearly a public service. And with only Stony Brook providing, and the only other public school providing this degree, this is a real... I think service by CUNY to be able to provide this additional level of training for nurses in an affordable fashion. Thank you. My remarks have nothing to do with the content quality of this degree or the ability of the Hunter faculty to provide it, but I am obliged by virtue of representing the faculty of the entire university to report to this committee that I have been deluge, as Lexa and others know, with complaints from the graduate faculty because they believe that their authority, and I know that the Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs disagrees entirely with me, they believe that their legal authority for, for reviewing doctoral programs is being ignored <coughs> and bypassed, and in the governance while it states that the president of the graduate school can recommend programs and apparently recommended this, it also states in another section that there is a committee on curriculum and structure, uh, that's not right, curriculum and new programs, which is required to review them. In my opinion, which is apparently rejected, uh, but I will state it anyway, it would have been much wiser for this to be put through the graduate school process. I can't believe they would have objected, considering the fact that they've no real interest in this, and not to decide that there's a policy separating practice doctorates from research doctorates. If the board wishes to establish that policy, then let it establish a resolution making it very clear because according to the faculty at the graduate school, who are very solid and serious people, this is not the current situation. I hope the faculty at Hunter do not take this as a criticism of their uh, program or what's in the package. I haven't got the capacity to evaluate it in a million years and wouldn't try. But I am obliged to represent what the faculty consider its governance obligations. Thank you. The governance plan of the graduate school provides uh, a mechanism for the approval of new doctoral programs that are at the graduate school. It nowhere provides that all doctoral programs within the university must be established at the graduate school. More than it, or approximately a year ago, as uh, Executive Vice Chancellor Loeb indicated, um, a study was done and a report issued on what are the options with respect to professional doctorate programs, which are a relatively new thing and are quite distinct from the research PhDs uh, for which the graduate school was created. And that task force report concluded um, that each of these should be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis to determine what was the appropriate campus uh, or school uh, for that doctorate. In this case, it was determined and developed by the faculty of Hunter College uh, that the program uh, would do well at Hunter College. Uh, the faculty at Hunter College reviewed it as faculty tend to do, and it was approved by the administration and forwarded to the board. Um, it obviously is within the board's authority to approve this, but I don't believe uh, there is anything in the graduate school's governance plan uh, to suggest that the graduate school uh, has a, a monopoly on the uh, approval of all programs that have the word doctoral in them. Yeah, and, and of course, this, this board uh, approved the letter of intent last June. That letter of intent was widely circulated in April of 2010, brought to this committee and then to the board. Um, and on 
until uh, uh, last week, I guess, uh, we had heard no uh, complaint uh, from, from anyone about this. Do you want to say something? No, no. Um, uh, Rick just covered what I was going to okay. say. Okay. Go on to say. According to the Graduate School Governance, reapproved by this board in May of 2010, it says in Part 31B, I'm sorry, 31A, the development of new degree programs or the revision of existing programs is the prerogative of the faculty. This is in the graduate school governance, and that is the basis of the statement. Uh, it's also, of course, been historically the way it was done since 1962 or three. Thank you. It speaks to the development of the new programs within that school is within the prerogative yeah, of the faculty, the and, nobody, and nobody, and nobody is, is contesting that. It doesn't say that all doctoral programs have to be at the graduate school. Okay. All right. Let's call the, the move the item. May I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Second? Seconded. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. Substantial? Okay. Item number 1B. I'd like to abstain oh. on, oh, I'm sorry, I'd like to abstain on okay. yeah, because yeah, of the okay. uh, issues yeah, that have been raised. Thank you. Right. Um, item number 1B6, Graduate School and University Center. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, we also, we're going to move uh, item number 6 and 7 together, which is both our Graduate School and University Centers. Uh, one is a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology, Sociology, and one is Arts in Health International Management. Okay, these, both of these uh, degrees are completion programs, um, and they're both in two popular majors, and they add to the existing online baccalaureate options currently offered by the School of Professional Studies. Although online and hybrid courses are offered throughout CUNY, at present, the School of Professional Studies is the only unit of CUNY that has sought to offer students the possibility of completing their entire degree online. Most other major public universities, such as the University of Massachusetts and SUNY, the State University of New York, already do so. And in New York State, the private colleges in New York State currently offer, actually, I would say, a, as of a year ago, offer 102 online baccalaureates. SUNY offered 77, and CUNY has three. The School of Professionals, so we are trying, we are doing this to add two more to the list uh, for CUNY. The School of Professional Studies online baccalaureates provide crucial options for adult degree completers who might not otherwise have been able to return to college and earn their degrees due to family, health, geographic, or work constraints preventing them from attending face-to-face -face classes. Discussion? Not, then let's uh, move the item. The both items, item six and seven. So moved. Okay, second it. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. Any abstention? No. Okay. Now, informational item. Okay, I have uh, four informational items for you this evening. Um, first, you'll recall our rescission of the CPE, that's the CUNY proficiency exam, last fall. At that time, we promised to institute another test to assess the general education of our students. Uh, towards that end, a task force has begun work to identify that other test. The task force has been charged with identifying a test that will measure the value added by a CUNY education, will be nationally benchmarked, will measure the sorts of skills and knowledge that are important outcomes of a CUNY education, and will be fiscally viable. This will not be, this test that we identify will not be what we call a high stakes test. Students will not need to pass this test to graduate or to transfer from a community to a senior college. Instead, we will test samples of freshmen and juniors or seniors to determine how much students learn at CUNY and in what areas. We will then use that information to inform how we teach our students. The task force expects to make its recommendations by the end of the spring semester. However, implementation may be slowed by the New York State procurement process, which can take a year or more. I will keep you informed as to the progress on these matters. The second uh, information item um, is that we are continuing our work to ensure that students move as expeditiously as possible towards their degrees. 
Uh, and we have previously discussed that in this committee and also as I wrote to the committee members in my December letter. Currently, when students transfer, many do not get full or sometimes any credit for the courses that they attempt to transfer. Um, and at CUNY, large numbers of students, high percentage of students transfer and in all possible directions. Um, currently, we are considering um, a proposal in which, uh, in order to ensure that um, general education credits would transfer, in, uh, we are considering a proposal in which um, community colleges would have a maximum of 36 credits of general education, which would be divided into broad divisions for AA and AS students, um, and uh, up to six uh, lower division or upper division additional credits for baccalaureate students in general education. And students who would take courses in this, within this general education framework uh, if they then transferred, they would, if they had taken part of it, they would get credit for whatever part they had taken. In addition, we're considering looking at, um, for the most popular transfer majors, having faculty, and I should say all of this would be worked on by faculty. Um, uh, and for the, but we're, we're considering looking at is for the majors, the most popular transfer majors, having groups of faculty work on identifying from three to six initial courses in any major that would be agreed upon for the whole system so that then students, if they took the first part of that, they could transfer to any college and get credit. And the third piece that we're looking at is to ensure that students, if they transfer with elective courses, courses that are not general education or that are not their major, that they would also get credit for that. The next information item um, is that I want to update you on progress with enabling the CUNY-wide Macaulay Honors College to offer joint degrees. You'll recall that last June, CAPRA recommended and then the Board of Trustees approved that Macaulay Honors College would register its own degree programs with the New York State Education Department. Up until then, Macaulay students received their degrees only from their home college, for example, Baruch. Under the new system, Macaulay students will receive a joint degree from their home college and the Macaulay Honors College. This change will allow easier tracking of students and will promote a stronger sense of community for all Macaulay students, regardless of their home college. But to do this, um, following the vote of the board, we've had to register with the New York State Education Department approximately 500 degree programs for Macaulay. Um, these are programs that are already registered with the home colleges and now are also registered with Macaulay. I'm happy to report that this work is essentially done and so the Macaulay students who will be graduating this spring will be able to receive a diploma awarded jointly by their home college and the Macaulay College. And it's been a lot of work by some special people and uh, we want to thank them for what they've done. Um, as you also know, um, uh, at the last board meeting, you voted to <coughs> expand CUNY's tobacco policy to prohibit any tobacco use anywhere on CUNY property by September 2012. We will be using this policy change as a unique educational opportunity to better inform students, faculty, and staff about healthy behaviors and how to increase them. We will be supported significantly in this work by the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. This work will be done synergistically with the community-based prevention and chronic disease-oriented work of our new School of Public Health. The School of Public Health had a site visit for its initial full accreditation in December and there will be a vote by the accreditor with respect to full accreditation in June. All has gone well so far and we're expecting a positive vote. And last, and I guess this is number five, so um, I was incorrect when I said four, but this one is short. <laughs> Finally, in early February, we are starting training for the electronic document system that we will be using for CAPRA. So we hope to have the full system in operation for the April CAPRA meeting. That's the first sign is here, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh. <laughs> you want me to keep on it? Thank you. Just identify for the record. That's Corey Provost. Um, and my two comments, first comment was in regard to the CPE. Um, I know that the CPE's news came at a interesting meeting um, in November, and I was definitely glad that the university sought to rescind the CPE. And I'm also glad that with the implementation of, implementation of the new testing that it will not be a high stakes test. I think the students will be very pleased at that. And my last comment is about the new um, electronic copies. Because when I first 
um, became a member of the board and I seen how much paper we <laughs> used, especially for this meeting, mm -hmm. I was kind of stunned. <laughs> so I think it'll, it'll be great as we get on to become a greener university. Thank you. Well, well taken. I have a carry in the subway. So <laughs> <laughs> Comments? Not. Any other items? No. All right. So let me have a motion to adjourn. So move. Thank you all for coming.